Here is everything. Hello and welcome to everything that I made in 2023. My name is Umbriel, in case you don't know me, and let's just get started. I made 32 projects this year, last year. It's 2024 when I'm filming this, so I hope you still enjoy watching all my finished objects. I chose a spot where I have a lot of white wall right here. And in case you're wondering why you see my shadows, I have a huge ring light on and it's the middle of the day, but it's just gray outside. There's not enough light. So this is what we're dealing with today. I hope you're okay with that. All right, there's so much to show you. I had this feeling that I wasn't actually, I didn't actually have that many finished objects this year, but turned out it was mostly that I didn't knit as many garments this year compared to last year. Um, so I made one of these before last year. So go watch that one after this one or before this one, whatever you want. And let's just get started. Um, first off, the numbers, because I think that's fun to share. I finished 32 projects this year, of which nine pairs of socks, where I made three of those were for my partner, um, Nelson, and he has very large feet. So I feel like that's even, that could be like two pairs each. <laughs> um, and I'll show you those today. I made six, uh, no, five sweaters or cardigans. I wrote all this down on my phone and I'm filming on my phone. So I feel a little silly right now. <laughs> and I'll put the other ones right here uh, and I'll go through everything chronologically. So I'll start with January. And this is not just knitted, by the way, I also crocheted. And look at this cute little mug. In January, I, first thing I finished, uh, I was working on my first ever design and this was my only design up to now. And these are the Kirstenbosch socks. Uh, I knit these using the Cowgirl Blues yarn in something orchid and something lemon. And I actually haven't really been wearing these a lot because when I finished them, I didn't want to wear them because I wanted to use them for pictures. And then after that, I was wearing this other pair where I used the same yarn, um, the leftover purple one for another pair that I'll show you later, but those faded a lot. So I didn't really feel like wearing them. And I have figured out that for socks, I really like the um, Shurwolle. I don't know, the like, I don't know if that's the name of it, but the not uh, soft feeling yarn. So more like the opal kinds of yarns, those self-striping ones. That yarn is great for socks, I think. Just really durable. And I feel like a lot of soft yarn, it just peels a lot. Doesn't really hold up that well. So yeah, but that's just uh, my opinion. Um, yeah, so those are the Curse of My Socks. That was my first finished object. And I'll just get going because there's 32 things to get through. So here we go. Next up is this sweater. Um, and I'll put in a little clip of me wearing everything that I can put right here. Um, yeah, so for the garments, you'll see that coming up, but I don't have to tell you because you'll already see it. So anyway, this is the Zodiac sweater or pullover by King Studio. So that's the knitwear branch off of King Fiber, the yarn brand. Um, and this was a test knit. And if you have followed me for a while, you know, that wasn't a very successful test knit. I did make it on time, but um, there were a lot of uh, beginners in the test knit and that was fine. Of course, that's fine. But um, the designer wasn't really helping them. Uh, so it was kind of a 
weird vibe in the group where I don't know like the more design the more experienced testinators were helping out the beginner testinators because the pattern wasn't really clear so that was kind of a weird one but it's good to know um those kind of things and i haven't really testnated that much after that uh so this whole year anyway this is a whole mohair sweater and then there's like uh, the cuff and at the arms, there's some de features in DK weight, uh, regular yarn. And I gotta say, it's really nice to have a mohair sweater because it's really warm, but so compact. So you can just squish it up and have it in a little backpack, a little bag to have it in case you get cold. So I think I'll be making another one that's a little less uh flowing all over the place um and a little less of the dk weight uh, so it will be even more compact the yarn that's a good one to say i used all yarn from i bought it at a because in last year i was in south africa and that's where i bought the yarn i bought it at spin knits but i <laughs> That's the store that I put in that description of that video when I was working on it on a podcast. And then uh, YouTube gave me a penalty because that website was corrupted or something. So that was kind of crazy. Um, so <laughs> don't go to the website. Uh, I just bought it somewhere and uh, that was their own yarn, these two colors. And then uh, this was African Is Expressions Hope which is um, a mohair from a factory in South Africa and or a wool factory, yeah. And it is 70% mohair and 30% polyamide instead of the silk. And I've got to say, I would not recommend if you use one strand of mohair to use a polyester blend because there have been holes in this. And I think if you use a mohair silk, the silk is super strong and that wouldn't happen. So yeah, you live and you learn. <laughs> it's really not that big of a deal. I'm going to keep it neat this time because I remember from last year, I just made one big mess and then it was really hard to, um, yeah, to clean up. Okay. Next up is my probably most worn item. And these are my mittens. I made the arched gusset mittens and I've used them so much and that's why they look like this. <laughs> I used a pattern by Pearl Soho, which was a free pattern. And what I did is doing a folded cuff, which is from my uh, sock pattern, the one that I showed you at the start, uh, from the Kirstenbach socks. And uh, yeah, I made this maybe a little too short on the... Uh, arm part but they look tiny but my hands are tiny so um, yeah they fit me perfectly because they're made to my hands and I use this hobby Saphir yarn that I bought a bunch of um, when they had a batch that ran, went wrong and there will be more uh, projects using this yarn in here in this uh, wrap up today so most worn item perfect even wore them in freezing minnesota they work great and i really like the design where you increase like this instead of increasing for the thumb outwards i really like that all right next up we're still in January. So January was a good month, but I also, I mean, I finished these in January. I did uh, those two first two, I already started in 2022 in December. Um, but these I made while traveling through South Africa. So a little rewind, we were there for two months. I was working from our Airbnb and my boyfriend was doing internship. 
And uh, then we traveled for uh, a week and a half, I think. And then I made these socks. Um, so these are just a random free-handed sock using a two by one rib. And I started at the cuff. I did a two by one too, and then I folded it over because I was really fan of that, <laughs> as you can tell. Um, yeah, I uh, did that because I put that in my own pattern and then I just did it a bunch on socks, on mittens, on everything. Um, and then I uh, put in an afterthought heel at the end and that's why they were finished at the end of January because I finished the whole thing while traveling up to the toe and then I had to cut in for the afterthought heel and I did that when I was home. And my boyfriend has been wearing these a lot. Um, for the foot, I went stockinette for the bottom part and two by one for the top part. Uh, he does like his normal uh, stockinette socks the most. So I don't even have to do ribbing for him. But anyways, that was my first sock for my boyfriend this year. Uh, and as you can see, he's been wearing them a lot and there's been some good felting going on. Um, yeah, that's great. All right, going into February, I felt like I was going to knit another pair for my boyfriend. So I bought the pattern Bear Paw Socks by Andrea Maori. I think she did some kind of discount or something something uh, i bought them uh, because i really liked the idea of toe up dk weight socks because i like toe up and then i learned a new heel method so this is a flegal heel um and i really like the way that she used two different colors and then uh, combined them together in the main part but still made them pop in the other parts so I used two, oh, I didn't say what I used for the other socks, for the previous socks. I used some opal yarn, one of those self-striping, self-coloring socks for the socks that I just showed you. But for the bear paw socks, I used, this was Focalana Arretta, and this was a sock yarn, just a random sock four ply by Hobby. And, uh... Yeah, I think they are already pretty together. Um, I made the largest size for this one. And then they turned out a little too big, although he still really likes them. So uh, I'll be showing you another pair later uh, that I made in size smaller. But they're so huge. <laughs> yeah, that was. Uh, that's why I feel like this is like, two pairs of socks, you know? Yeah, lots of socks this year, it's crazy. So at this point I was like, oh, I'm just gonna make one pair of socks per month, but I didn't do that because I already showed you, told you about that. So that was February, only those socks, but March, we have a really good score. Starting with, and I, I kind of thought I finished this like the year before, but that's why it's nice to do these wrap ups because then you realize, but then I finished my sweater number 15. So this is the sweater number 15 by my favorite things knitwear. And I made this in Knitting for Olive Merino held together with Knitting for Olive soft silk mohair. And do you see, I feel like this light can really show you how shiny it is. And how pretty it is. I mean, it is 100% natural fibers. But it's so soft. It's so soft. And it smells so good. The other day this was lying on the couch and my mom came up and she was like, Wow, this sweater smells so good. And I said, yeah, that's just the yarn. <laughs> that's just what it does. Um, so I was playing yarn chicken to the max on this one. I think I made the size medium. My bus circumference... It's usually around an extra large, but I size down really often because there's so much positive ease and you don't really need that if you wear a sweater that you go out in, like outside the door. 
maybe it's nice to have a sweater that's a little more oversized for inside, but I don't know. Uh, interesting topic, I think. Anyway, so I started the medium and then I soon realized that I was running out of yarn. So then for the sleeves, I picked up the amount of stitches for the extra small uh, sleeve. And I think I knitted them one uh, repeat shorter. And the sleeves are for sure a little short. So that's a little, a little bit of a bummer. Um, but I am happy that this isn't bigger because there's no decreases underneath the sleeve. It's just straight, 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 straight. And I am happy that my sleeve is a little tighter because I think if it was one repeat more, then it would have been kind of too big for me at the arms, especially because it's shorter. But yeah, then it had to be even shorter. And then the rest of the yarn I used for the body and then soon I realized I was running out of yarn uh, near the end and I decided because you usually do ribbing so it doesn't curl up but uh, cables are basically rib so I just went cables until the end because <laughs> I wanted to do the most cables I could and then I just did one last round I did in ribbing and then while doing an Italian bind off at the end, I ran out of the mohair. So then some of the Italian bind off is in um, just the merino, but you can't tell. You can tell that there's no ribbing, but that's okay with me. And I feel like you don't see it when I wear it. And one other thing, I picked up a lot less stitches for the neck uh border and it stretched out a lot so i feel like i don't know it's not really that sturdy the neck uh like the collar but yeah i really like wearing it it's not as pretty to put on as i hoped it was although probably other people will tell me otherwise when they see me wear it, it feels more like a work from home sweater than it is a going outside sweater. But I'm glad I knitted it. I mean, yeah. Then in March, I also finished, I did another test knit. I kind of forgot about all the test knits that I did. I said, oh yeah, and then I didn't do any test knits and then here I am. But this one is for the Knit Pro Girl, who is a very great designer and is very nice to test knit for. So I would highly recommend testing for her. And I made the Semper Slipover V-neck edition. And this has been a wardrobe staple. So I have been wearing this a lot to work. I feel like slipovers are great to wear to work, especially at my office, it's like really hot all the time and then but it's cold outside so you kind of want to wear something warm so it's nice to have something on your body um knitting the v-neck was a beast <laughs> this is a double folded super long thick uh ribbed uh, v-neck edge and it was a lot of work but it's super worth it and I used um, Lana Grossa hand dyed in the colorway Nanda. I'm proud of myself that I still remember that. Held together with drops kit silk in the chalk colorway, which is the widest one. Um, and I think it looks really good. The two, uh, I had two hanks for this. Uh, yarn the main yarn and they did vary a little bit so you can see that here it's a little more intense than at the top but um, I feel like because I added in the second one in the v-neck it kind of blends in together again so I'm okay with it and uh, yeah it's the way that variegated yarn uh, behaves I did take out a one time I like ripped back a, a bunch 
because there was like a lot that was just like plain and without the darker colors. So I did do that, I remember. Okay, and then also in March, oops, was another pair of bear paw socks. And this is the one that I made for myself. I put one on the sock blocker, just so you can see it a little better. And these are the ones that I've been wearing a lot. And I used the Cowgirl Blues yarn, and this is that's this yarn. And see how much it faded, so I'll grab that other pair of socks. That's the same exact yarn in the same exact colorway, the same hank. Um, so that's how much the color faded, and the same up here. So the dark purple here is this light white almost <laughs> leaning purple uh color there so that's why i'm not too excited to wear these because i feel like the the color is just going to come out and i love the way that they look um yeah so i have been wearing these around the house a lot i have made the i think it's the medium women's size and then for the length of the foot i just did my own measurements uh, she does give, so this is the Andrea Maori pattern, the same one that I made for my boyfriend, those really long ones. And I have a little cute little picture of us wearing them together. I did a little foot photo shoot. <laughs> I'll pop in the picture. Um, yeah, and I've been wearing them a lot and I wash these in the washing machine. I don't do that to all my socks, but socks that I just wear a bunch, I'm just treating as normal socks. I don't really want to have to do anything special. Um, I forgot to tell you what I held it together with. This yarn, also uh, a lot of color came out. Maybe it's because I washed it with the washing machine, but I don't know. It's probably my own fault. Uh, this yarn is from VMCA Sock Yarn, and I have talked about her a lot. It's uh, someone who makes, who dyes yarn just for the fun of it and she's from the Netherlands so you can check her out on Instagram if you're interested and all information is always of all these projects will be on my Ravelry just so you know so those are the bear paw socks for me and then we go into April and in that month I finished another bunch of projects it will slow down later in the in the year. I'll have like one finished objects per month, but I don't know what happened at the start of the year, but I was a knitting machine, apparently. I This was my birthday cast on. So my birthday is March 8th, International Women's Day. <laughs> and um, this is what I cast it on. It's the Amy Slipover by Sunness Garn. And I knitted that in Hobby Sephira, the same yarn that I used for my mittens, but then in this darker color. And so that was one of those batches that they had to get rid of. So I got it for a discount. Um, and I made some alterations because the original pattern has a really short shoulder part and then a really large uh space for the ribbing so you almost have like a tube that comes out because it's so wide so i made some alterations i made this a little bigger i did some short rows and i did increases for the front um, just so it would be a little more of a shape uh this so this would be more like a shape and then i just picked up stitches for the big ribbed neck and I love it. I love this so much. And I think that, yeah, the prettiest part is this side slit thingy that is held together with um, some bows. So yeah, I wear this one to work a lot as well. And it's really nice neutral. This is neutral for me. I love colors, um, but this is definitely a neutral to wear to work. So that's great. And then I was almost, I almost ran out of the yarn, but I had a little bit left over and I thought I could make another muscle burrow out of that. So I did, I made this 
Masoboro hat in the same month. Um, and I made this one for my boyfriend. He has been wearing them a lot. So that's why it's kind of like stretched out like this. And yeah, I finished up all of the rest that I had of this yarn. So that also feels great to kind of just use up your stash and use everything up. So I might do that more if I have a little bit left over to cast on a hat immediately and maybe just gift it. But yeah, that's a muscle, muscle borrow hat by Isolde Teague. So I made that one. And then in the same month, April, I also cast it on another pair of bear paw socks. And if you think, wow, those still look so great. That is because uh, they were gifts and I still haven't gifted them. Um, and I'm also kind of wondering if they are big enough for her. Um, and the weird thing is I knitted one of them smaller than the other one, but the stitches are the same. The needle size was the same. I was just knitting tighter on this one. Like you can really tell the difference here. Okay. I'm holding it up a little bit, but here, see, it's smaller and they fit me fine. Um, but her feet are a little longer, but narrower. I don't know. I still need to give them to her, but there are the pair of paw socks. And I used the, um, the self-striping yarn of a sock that I'll show you later. And then the yellow is also hobby four ply sock yarn. So those still need to be gifted. Okay, then we get into May. And I hope you still are keeping up. I did another test knit. So I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> oh, and, oops. I forgot one thing. So in April, I also made um, the summer headband that maybe you've seen on my Instagram. I'll pop in a picture. I don't know where it is. It was supposed to be like a, maybe a free pattern or for a euro or something because I felt like I needed something to put my hair back in the summer and I just whipped it up and I had a few people testing it for me, but then I never ended up uh, releasing that pattern. I don't know why. I just, uh, I don't know. I haven't really been doing anything, releasing anything for designing after just my bear boss, uh, my Kirsten Bosch socks. <laughs> I should say the right one. I didn't design the bear paw socks. Anyway, back to May. Um, I finished, I did a test knit for Junia, Julia Lohn, who is knits and Fika on Instagram. And I test knitted this little scarf for her. This is, she made a little connect, uh, collection of four scarves and this is the number four, uh, the anytime, anywhere scarf. And I think mine was featured on her Ravelry as like the main picture um, because my color choice was just so good. <laughs> I literally just used my leftover from my sweater number 15, which is the knitting for Olive Merino in the Dusty Artichoke. Um, I didn't say that with my sweater, but that was Dusty Artichoke. And then uh, I used Cotton Merino by Knitting for Olive in Dark Ochre. And it's really pretty. And I finished it so quickly and I thought it was tiny and then I blocked it and then it was huge. So that's always the funny thing about these little scars, um, you do get like a lot out of just a little bit of yarn and a little bit of time. So I've never worn it because I don't know when to use this or wear this or anything. So in that month in uh, May, <laughs> I'm like laughing at myself because I said I didn't really test it after that bad experience in January, but I did a test crochet. <laughs> I test knitted the, or test crocheted, the mini yarn cozy by Nitty Natty. And I'll put in a picture because I don't know where mine is. I think it's in my like thing where I keep all my equipment. 
but I couldn't find it when I was gathering all the stuff to film this. So you know, have to do with this picture. Um, it was really nice for me to test for Nitty Natty. I have been a fan of hers ever since I have started watching knitting podcasts and crocheting podcasts. So it was really fun to be able to test for her. So yeah, I was really happy doing that. And the yarn that I used was a uh, hobby four ply sock yarn in that lilac colorway. Then we get into June already. And in June, I finished two things. And there is one thing that I haven't put in my Ravelry that I have right here. I think I finished it in April or May. I'm just gonna pop it in right now. I made the Boulevard bag by Lily Kate Makes or Lily Kate, Lily Kate France. Um, and I made this for my first video on stashing down my acrylic yarn stash. Um, and I love it. I use it uh, mostly when I'm like away, I use it. It's a really perfect crossbody bag and um, there's no lining, but I don't feel like that's necessary. Um, there's a lot of space in it. It has room to like grow a little bit because it's knitting, but it's super sturdy. I'm really happy with it. And this was all acrylic yarn that I had in my stash and then I used cotton for the strap. And I didn't do a double knit. I just went around and around because you get the same effect. Yeah, and there's a whole video about it if you're interested in that. So I think I finished it in April or May. It's really weird that I haven't made a project on Ravelry because I'm really always doing that, but that's okay. There's two projects that I finished in June but both of those were a gift and they were also part of my acrylic stash down journey. The first one was the festival sweater, uh, the chow version that I made for a little baby. Um, and I'll put in a picture. And then I also um, made the terrazzo neck, so the collar by Petite Knits in, in some acrylic yarn for my mom for her birthday which is in July, but I made it on time so I could go on a holiday. Um, and what I did there is I made it top down instead of bottom up because I wanted to use up as much yarn as I could. And I was afraid I was gonna run out of yarn uh, if I would do it bottom up. So if you're interested in all of my notes on that, it will be in my Ravelry project page. Then we get into July and in July, I made, and this is the yarn that I was talking about, I made these socks and they're just a plain vanilla sock that I free handed. I made it toe up and I made them for Sock Week 2023 that Nitty Natty hosts. Um, now I'm just going to sound like a fangirl, but that's okay. Uh, and I used the exact same yarn as I did for that gift, the Bear Paw socks. So this is a self-striping yarn and I don't know the brand anymore. I bought it at a local yarn store uh, a long time ago and they were my first pair of socks, but then I ripped them out and made this new pair um, because I didn't really like um, my tension and everything. Um, so I made this new pair and I wear these all of the time. So I feel like this is placed at the perfect spot uh, the heel for my foot uh, and I did a little bit of cabling at the cuff that I'm also happy with. Yeah, and you can see by all the pilling I wear these all the time and I also wash them in the washing machine and there's no color that came out. So I prefer these kinds of sock yarn for sure. That's what you learn, right? Um, then we are still in July and I made another, oops. I put in little pieces of paper 
that show me where I am to make it easier. And I have my Ravelry right there. Then I have my second crochet project, uh, except for that uh, cozy. I made another video for my acrylic stash down journey. So this is all in acrylic yarn again. Um, and I made this mushroom bag. And I like to call this one my eggs with mushrooms bag because the yellow and the white kind of looks like it's like a sunny side up egg, but then like a really large yolk. That's okay. And then a mushroom on it. So it's kind of funny. Um, it was fun to make, to crochet something. I don't really use it that often, but I feel like it's more like a summertime bag. And I did use it in a lot in the summertime. So it's just hanging on our coat rack, uh, ready for me to grab. And it holds a lot of stuff and it really has a lot of space in it. So it's great. And, uh, Strap straps are made with single crochets, so they're really not to like they have a lot of they don't have any stretch, they're really sturdy, so that's great too. I feel like, yeah, so that's this bag that I crocheted, and I think next time I would not crochet something that I would later stitch on because I feel like they're kind of almost falling off. Uh, in most places the mushrooms are so I would rather make a granny square and then just like sew them together and then be done uh, rather than making all these tiny little things that you sew on afterwards so then we get into August and in August I made another pair of bear paw socks for my boyfriend I think one of these I finished in like June and then the other one I finished in August so a lot of times it's like that that I worked on something for a long time and then I just say in which month I finish them but actually I have been working on them for months um yeah so this is another one of those yarns that I don't know the name of anymore but I oh I do have it because I had that when I did my podcast and then I didn't remember here we go I have it because I looked it up. I looked at my receipts because I remember I bought it from Hobby. Uh, so this self-striping yarn is v Viking of Norway Nordless in the colorway 964. And it's really a uh, really interesting yarn. It's like a, it's no plies. It's just a one ply or non ply. I don't know how you say that, but it's really soft and it holds up really nicely. I thought it was going to just peel all the, the whole, <laughs> a lot. Um, but it does so in kind of a nice way. Like it, it just gets more sturdy and I like them held together with itself. Uh, the self striping, I think that's really cool. And, uh, yeah, the, blue yarn <laughs> is another hobby uh, four ply sock yarn that I have had a lot of I think I have a little less now because I use so much but he has been wearing these a lot too and this is the bear paw socks in the smaller size the smaller men's size but then for the length I still did the same length so these fit really nicely also in August I finished and I started this in July, but I finished my Friday tea. And if you have followed me, you know, I'm not super happy with the outcome of it. I was so excited about it. And I still think it's so, so pretty. Um, I used uh, Knitting for Olive Merino for the gray, like oatmeal, kind of colorway and I used a hand dyed yarn for the stripes and I think it just looks so pretty but the arms are like open and you can kind of see my armpit and I didn't have enough of this yarn left over um, so I used up everything and I kind of like decided where to do everything and I used I made this shirt in a lot less yarn that was recommended and what I'm thinking how I'm going to fix this because I do want to fix it because it's such a nice t-shirt. 
Um, I have made another top in this yarn and I never wear it. Um, it's the August Camisole by Godebri by Johanna um, from the year before. And I think I'm gonna rip that one out and use the yarn that I have for making the sleeves longer. So I have sleeves until like here, which is the, the pattern. So I think I'll do that, but you have to follow along for more. <laughs> yeah, so I'll do that later, but that's what I'm thinking right now. And then in the same month, uh, I think also August, yes, also August, I finished up this hat, which is my definitely my most worn hat ever, because I don't really wear hats that much. But this is my muscle bar hat. Doesn't it look great on top of my hair tied up? But I used yarn from Malabrigo, and I have the yarn right here. Malabrigo Arroyo in the colorway way Anniversario. And I bought that yarn in Duluth uh, two years ago now, and I finally made it into a hat. And the funny thing is, this side is really pretty, and then I don't really like this side because it's too green. So I always wear the muscle bar hat by Isolde Teague. I always wear it inside out. Uh, well, I mean, just this is how the muscle bar goes is that you make a long tube, fold it into itself, and then you wear it one side out. Um, and I always wear it this side out and fold it up. It's perfect. I love this one. It has the perfect amount of slouch and I can fill, fold it up. So I'm really happy with that one. All right, we're closing towards the end um, because I don't know, the, the final half a year was just a little slower than the first part. So don't worry that we're only in September. Uh, there's not that much left to show you. So first I want to show you my poppy tea. So this is another tea by Petite Knits. And the funny thing is I made all of her teas. Is that true? Which ones are there? Oh yeah. So she has the mod tea, the Friday tea and the poppy tea. And the mod tea I made last year. So 2022, I made it into a sweater, but it's the T pattern. And I made the Friday tea I just showed you, and then I made the poppy tea. So I made this one in drops cotton merino in this navy colorway. And I was, I fell in love with this construction. So the shoulder construction, I love, and I always talk about it. <laughs> Maybe I should talk about it a little less, but I love this gold shoulder construction. I do not know if I love it in a tee, because a tee, you always wear something over it. Well, not always, but a lot of times. So if you wear like a cardigan or a blazer over it, this kind of shoulder construction kind of rides up. Whereas if you have a raglan or a saddle shoulder, it doesn't ride up. So. I think for a T, I wouldn't do this shoulder construction, but I definitely want to make a sweater with the shoulder construction. And I'll show you a cardigan with that shoulder construction in just a few projects. So yeah, big hit, good pattern. I love it. I made the small, which is a lot smaller than is recommended for me, but I told you about why I do that. And then in that month, which was September, I also finished this pair of socks. Um, Una Socks by Omi Knits. It's from the 52 Weeks of Socks book. So this was my first pair of socks that I finished from there. And the yarn that I used, I won in a giveaway uh, where we made a fest. And the fest that I showed you, the Semper Shop Over, won. And it was Brook Willow's giveaway, or like knit along, I guess. And then I won yarn, so that was great. Um, and I used this brown yarn, which is a color that I would never have bought, but I love it. And I made these beautiful socks. And I fell in love with this type of heel flap. 
It's like a honeycomb kind of thing with some uh, garter stitches on the side. And I actually haven't really been wearing them. I'm a little confused to when I wear uh, lace socks. And then I feel like it would be cute to have them like kind of stick out on top of your shoes. But <laughs> these uh, legs are so long, so it doesn't really look cute, if that makes sense. So you just have like really cutesy lace socks, but then they're really long. So I don't know, maybe in boots, but I don't have boots. I have boots, but I don't wear them. But <laughs> maybe I could get some like Doc Martens or something. Yeah. Okay. So I'm really happy with them, but I don't wear them. But I think they're pretty. I don't know. And the yarn has yak in it. Going into October. This is a beast of a shawl. I made the Sophie shawl. And this was my fourth acrylic project that I haven't actually made a video on. Or no, it was my fifth. Fifth acrylic yarn, uh, yarn stash projects. And I did film a lot, but it's just like, it's only stocking it. <laughs> you just do the same thing until you're at the middle and then you decrease. And then you do the same thing and the same thing. So this is really long. And I realized I have this one scarf um, from 100% wool that I haven't knitted. That was like, a, it's woven, it's store-bought. And I wear that one all the time. And I just don't feel like, I don't feel the need to wear another scarf. I already have a scarf and it's pink and it's purple. So it's almost the same thing too. So yeah, I wear that one instead. So that was October. See, I told you we're going fast um, because now we're getting into November. And now we have a really pretty one. So I got back, I was like, I haven't made any big sweaters this year. So here we go. <laughs> Ta da! This is definitely, together with this one, my favorite project of the year, and that is my Eva cardigan. So, another project by Petite Knits. And um, I used Noro Silk Garden Sock Solo. I can finally say it. <laughs> so proud of myself. Uh, held together with Drops Kit Silk in uh, Light Lavender. And the Noro yarn T81 was the color paint. And this has the same shoulder construction that the Poppy T has. And I think it's perfect on a cardigan. I wear this one all the time, usually at home. I wore it, when I finished it, I wore it immediately to the office. And I was so hot, so hot. But it's too hot in our office, I feel like. Um, <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, it was kind of embarrassing because I was wearing black pants, like, or like fancy pants and then just a regular Navy top. And then I had to take it off all the time. And there was like fuzz from the mohair. It was just shedding, shedding, shedding all over my shirt. And I was hot, so I took it off. And then I got cold, put it back on. And my colleague, but it's like a friend kind of colleague. She was like, what's going on? I'm like, yeah, I just finished this. And I wanted to wear it so bad. And it's just not working out. Yeah, but it's nice and warm. But I am definitely going to slow down on the mohair. Because otherwise my knits are just not wearable. And I think that's a waste. So... I'm really happy for it, for this one. I like mohair, I like the way it feels, but it's just so hot. You live and you learn. That's gonna be my motto of this video. You live and you learn. So that's, I'm trying to make a neat pile here. You don't see it, but that's the Eva Cardian. So I just have some more fun stuff coming up. I think we are in December. I just like raced to the end here because I made uh, this one, three little crochet little thingies. 
socks and a sweater. All right. <laughs> So I made the Yolo Clava Balaclava by Typical Bliss. Um, she was doing a knit along on her live streams on YouTube and I joined and I made this version. This is mine. Um, and I kind of joined her in using up all these little scraps so this that was really nice to do i used three strands of yarn held together i used a regular white sock yarn by lang yarns um i used one whole one of those so 50 grams and i held it together with drops brushed alpaca silk in that's the like blue haze that you see it's this like light gray uh light blue kind of thing and then I used a DK strand that I knotted everything together. And that's all the other stuff that you see. Um, so I had a little structure that I did. I went to like, from light, I went to colorful, I went to dark, and then I went to light, colorful, dark, kind of like that. So that's my Yola Clava and I can pop in some pictures of me wearing it over the Christmas time. I was in Minnesota skiing and it was perfect. So I recommend everybody to have a balaclava in case they are in real winter because we don't have that anymore in the Netherlands. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that's the balaclava. Then I made um, yeah, well, one of them is not really finished, but I'll show you these two. I got into... <laughs> I got into crocheting some amigurumi. <laughs> so over Christmas, my uh, brother-in-law, he got me this kit of this little llama. And then he gave one to my mother-in-law and some other ones for the other women. And uh, I immediately started making this little penguin. Uh, we call him Wheezy from Toy Story. And then this is the llama that I made after that. And uh, her name is Truffle. <laughs> so it's Truffle and Wheezy. And uh, they were like kind of our mascots for the Christmas time. And everybody was very impressed that I like immediately started crocheting and just made little mini amigurumis. I used a smaller hook size, so they are smaller than they should be, but I think they're super cute. And I accidentally made the face like the snout a little crooked, but then I thought that's like what a llama looks like. They're like, you know, so. True, like, is this a llama or is it a stuffy, a fluffy, a plushy? Who knows? I think it's real. <laughs> okay, so I felt like a little kid. And then I also made, but I haven't actually finished it. I made this little Charmander because there's no eyes on it yet. I didn't want to just do the same as this because then I felt like it wouldn't look like Charmander. And then I tried a bunch of different, like those Pokemon eyes. So Charmander is a Pokemon, um, but I didn't succeed. So now there's a eyeless Charmander so I made that one as well. And then there's two things that I finished really quickly before the end of the year. Um, first one being my riverbed socks. Uh, and this is a pattern by Hohi Locatelli from the 52 Weeks of Socks book. I also filmed all of this pro process and I wanted to make it into a video, so you might see that one coming up later. And I have been wearing them a lot. I'm wearing them right now. And then, uh, oh yeah, I used two strands of mohair held together with a yarn from Spin Knits, uh, the same yarn that I used for that very first sweater that I showed you. Um, so the mohair is the same as that sweater, and then the blue yarn is also the same as the contrast in that sweater so that's really nice i'm wearing them a lot it feels really weird to have such softness around your feet uh, but it's great 
it's really great. And then finally, this is my Advent project. And I've got to say, I actually, there, I'll stand up so you can see a little better. Ta-da! This was my Advent project for December of 2023. I used Artemis Yarns uh, Advent, the weekend Advent. So I had four colors. I used four colors for this um for this one, so one, two, three, four. And then for the fifth color, I combined them all together. So I held two strands of yarn all throughout. So it's fingering weight yarn, but I'm knitting a DK weight sweater. So Stripe Hide Pullover by Veronica Lindberg or Kutuvakika. So here I used um, two strands of yarn held together. So I started with the yellow and the pink. And then I did helical knitting with the other two colors, so the blue and the uh, orange. And then it created another colorway, which I think is really pretty. Um, so yeah, that's how I did the fifth color. And the main color that I used is Lang Yarns um, Yeah Wool, their regular four-ply sock yarn in this cobalt blue. And I love it. I was a little scared it was going to be too small because I didn't check gauge and I was a lot smaller. Um, I made the extra large for the body and I made the medium for the arms because uh, I wanted it to be wide but I didn't want to have huge sleeves because I feel like that happens a lot with the larger sizes is that the sleeves are just too big. They don't need to be that big for bigger sizes, I don't think. I blocked it and now it's perfect. It's really nice. I'm so happy. Uh, and I actually secretly finished it on the 4th of January. But that was like, I would just had a little bit of like sleeve left over. I feel like it would be weird to put it into the next year, to put it into 2024. It feels like I made this in 2023. So. Here it is, and I wear it all the time, and I'm really happy with it. Let's have a truffle with us while we do this. That was 2023, all my knitting and crocheting that I did in this year, or in the previous year, I guess. I'm super happy with everything that I made. I think what I did this year differently than last year, to do a little reflection, I was thinking a lot more about what I would actually wear and what I actually want to have. Um, and you learn while you knit and make things and you realize what kind of stuff you don't wear and what kind of stuff you do wear. So for example, the mohair thing, I now have in my mind like, okay, I want to use two strands of a fingering weight yarn instead of holding it with a mohair, stuff like that. Um, and I think I'll just make more stuff that I love in the next year. I do have a lot of whips that I'm taking from 2023 into 2024. You haven't seen those. Um, and I am thinking about how I'm gonna tackle that, but also I've already casted on new things. Um, I'm just doing whatever makes me happy in the moment. And it's okay to have whips that are just lying around somewhere. Because if you want to have them, you'll pick them up. And if you don't wanna have them, you rip them out. That's how easy it is. And sometimes, you know, Instagram and other social media, maybe YouTube, can make you feel like you wanna have something, you wanna knit something, and then you make it and then you don't wear it. And that's really a waste. Um, I'm thinking of one specific project right now, a whip that I have, that I don't know if I would wear if I finish it, but I loved the Instagram pictures. So yeah. Um, I think me and Truffle are gonna go now. I hope you enjoyed this super long recap of 2023. If you wanna stick around and have you seen that we're almost at a thousand subscribers, it only took me two years. <laughs> but if you wanna join me, then please subscribe. I would be happy if you join me in my knitting and other making journey. All right, 
Have a lovely 2024 and I will see you soon. Bye!